Filters. At some point in your photography or videography journey, you have to use them, and most beginners need a guide to choose these filters, know when or how to use them, and what filters are good. Hello, my name is Andrei Dima, I am a professional travel photographer and videographer, and in this video I am going to answer these questions. First, let's talk about UV filters. Modern digital sensors are not affected by UV light like film was. So, these filters do not help you in any way when taking photos, but people found a second use for these filters, and that is to protect the front of your lens. Lenses are expensive compared to UV filters, so you should rather scratch or break a UV filter than the front element of your lens. The downside is that with some UV filters, Depending on the brand, you lose a bit of sharpness and contrast. Another thing, and the motive I don't use them anymore, is you get ugly flaring sometimes, even with the lens hood on. So now I protect my lenses only by using the lens hood. But this is me, I still recommend UV filters to beginners and with time you will see if you will keep it or not. Tip, stay away from cheap brands when it comes to filters. The best start filters that are decently priced and optically good are Hoya. I am still using Hoya filters alongside my more expensive filters, like the Freewell Magnetic 7-in-1 kit. Now let's talk about my favorite and most useful filters, the ND filters. Neutral density filters are filters that you put in front of your lens screw on or drop on, so that you can reduce some of the light that reaches your camera sensor. These filters do not change the color of your image, that is what neutral stands for. These filters are like sunglasses for your camera. You can use these filters for multiple purposes. I use them a lot for long exposure photography, time lapses and video, but can also be used for portrait photography and vlogging when you want a shallow depth of field in very bright light. ND filters come in different forms and strengths, from ND2 to ND100000. ND2 means one stop of light reduced, ND64 means six stops of light reduced. ND200 means 7 and 2 thirds stops of light. I put a link with a chart in the description below that will help you decide what strength you need. I use them for long exposure time lapses for a more dynamic look. Because I don't like time lapses that look like stop motion. Most ND filters are round and you can mount in front of your lens. For some wider lenses you need a filter holder that uses square or rectangular filters like these ones. You also have graduated ND filters like this one, which are partially dark and the density graduates from top to bottom from darker to transparent. These are good for landscape photography when you have bright skies or you can reverse it if you have a lot of lights in the foreground and want a brighter sky. You also have variable ND filters. You can rotate the front element of the filter to increase or reduce the amount of light that goes in to your sensor. This type of filters are good if you want to carry just one filter with you. The downside is that these filters create an X shape in your image when approaching maximum density because of the design and construction, but most manufacturers now break them in two, from 3 to 5 stops and 6 to 9. This way you don't get that annoying X shape in your photos and footage. Now, how I use the ND filter for long exposures. The ND filter allows you to use lower shutter speeds so that you can have motion blur in your photos or videos, about video later. Using a tripod you can make moving objects appear blurry in your photos. You can use this when photographing clouds, waterfalls or cars to give a sense of motion to your photos. An example, the ND helps you go from 1 over 50 of a second to an 8 second shutter speed. ND filters are very useful for video. You can use them to lower the shutter speed when recording in 24 frames per second to achieve that cinematic blur. This is called the 180 degree rule, when the shutter speed is double the frame rate. 
If you record in 24 frames per second, your shutter speed needs to be 1 over 50 or 1 over 48 depending on your camera to achieve that cinematic blur. But without an ND filter, your footage is going to be overexposed if recording in bright light. These filters are not as neutral as they say, most of them have a small color cast. The cheaper ones have a bigger one, you should be aware of this when buying ND filters. I use Hoya which have a good balance between quality and price. The more expensive version I use are from Freewell or Haida. Now let's talk about polarization filters. They are filters you put in front of a camera lens in order to reduce reflections, reduce atmospheric haze and increase saturation in images. The polarization filter absorbs polarized light which is light reflected from surfaces and some light from the sky. So with this filter you can reduce reflection from water like in these photos. Also from windows. This is good when taking photos from a train and much more. It also darkens the sky. This works when you are 90 degrees from the direction of the sun. When using a wide angle lens the effect can be uneven. The polarizer filter also reduces the light that enters the camera like an ND filter. Depending on the filter it is between 1 and 3 stops of light. And the final filters in this video which have a more aesthetic function, that is why I left them last. These are not for everyone. Diffusion filters. These filters create halation around highlights, like a glowing mist. These filters are used in fashion photography, food photography and for videos, especially at night, to give lights a soft glow. These filters come in different strengths depending on the brand. I use the Cinebloom filters from Moment. These filters come in 5, 10 and 20% strengths. I chose the Moment Cinebloom because they have a great price and good quality. If you want to simulate film photography with your camera or just don't like the sterile digital look of photos and videos, this filter is perfect for you. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. This helps me grow my channel and make more videos for you to watch. Also check out my presets pack in the description below. See you next time.